So this video was actually supposed to be part 3 of the Luna ABCs video series, but after writing down 6 pages that only cover the not even 2 minute long reveal teaser, I feel like this should be its own video. I have a lot of theories and connections that I cover in this video, so it is really going to be a lot of information and I don't really want to cut out anything, just because I have to cover the other 3 MVs in this video as well. So the analysis for the subunit MVs is going to be its own video. So something I just have to address before we start is that, well, a lot of orbits think that Kimlip's red and Jinsoul's blue make cherries purple, but this is not quite true. While Kimlip has a quote-unquote true red as her assigned color and Jinsoul seems to have a quote-unquote true blue, Cherry has a pale purple as her assigned color. Since Jinsoul's subcolor is black and Kimlip's MV has a lot of dark blue in it, I feel like Cherry's subcolor being white has a significant meaning to it. Maybe she is the one that lights up the world of Lunar. So in a way, Jinsoul and Cherry could have a yin and yang relationship. Yin, so the darkness, is associated with calmness, passive reception, the feminine and soft, while Yang is the sun, or brightness, and is associated with warmth, active giving, and masculinity. In a way, this could be interesting to us, since Cherry seems to be a big player in the Luniverse. So if Yang is associated with being active, and Cherry is the Odai Circle member that has the most connections to the YYYY and Luna One Third members, this kind of seems to be fitting. So it could be that the other two Odai Circle members need her to execute their plans. And this also fits in well with the Love Cherry Motion song and MV. Cherry has a bright song with a bright and bubbly MV, then a dark color is added in the beat breaks, and we get a much more darker sound as well. Like I said in my Love Chair Motion analysis, Jinsoul and Cherry's colors seem to mix and match in the song, and at the end we get to see them all together as equals. After Cherry's MV, there was a teaser released as a reward to fans. This was the reveal teaser for the Odai Circle subunit. The teaser has white borders, and the intro has a black background and combines Jinsoul's blue, Cherry's purple, and Kimlip's red. Again, showing us that Cherry is the connecting piece between Kimlip and Jinsoul, more so than the result of Kimlip and Jinsoul's colors. This moon eclipses in Kimlip's red, just like Kimlip's eclipse MV and it goes from the left to the right side. Now, this teaser reveals something to us. It reveals the new subunit, of course, but I feel like it also reveals something not quite so obvious. It shows us how the members are connected this far, because this far we have no idea how the members are connected, and a lot of the connecting pieces actually are shown to us in their subunit songs. So let's just imagine it's 2017 and Cherry has just released her song. You are quite excited about their subunit debut, but unlike Lil One Third, these members are not really shown being friends, so how do they actually become a group? How are they actually connected? After all, the dance scene and love to emotion were, well, they were just dance scenes. But that doesn't seem like a big interaction, does it? How do they end up standing together next to the Pink River? And after asking yourself all of these questions, on the 29th of August, something is revealed to us. It is revealed to us that these members have been featured in their MVs all along. But let's quickly analyze these teasers in order for us to understand how they reveal these connections. The teaser starts off with showing us Jinsoul standing in the purple field from the Love Cherry Motion MV. Then we get to see the scene where Cherry ran through the field, that is from her MV. When it quickly flashes to the running scene from Jinsoul's MV, and then we see Jinsoul again. This could be a hint to the identity of the person Jinsoul ran after, but I still believe that this is actually Eve. But I also believe that Cherry and Eve have a deeper connection than we thought this far making this a three-way connection. Kind of like the connections of the Singing in the Rain MV to the Rain 51 Decibel MV. And the new MV to the Girlfriend MV. And generally speaking, the Odd Circle members having a lot of three-way connections to Luna One Third, their own subunit of course, and YYYY. -Y -Y -Y. Now we can see the scene where Jinsoul is pouring the water and the fish into the new big fish tank that was featured in her MV. Quickly switching to the scene where the mirror cherry drops the cherry through the mirror. And now let me reach a little. This probably is supposed to reveal to us that the members shown to us sometimes are maybe not the members themselves actually. If we think about the overall story of the MVs, it would make sense that this Jinsoul is maybe not Jinsoul herself, and that the fish is a symbol for Jinsoul. She is teleported into another realm of the Luniverse, which explains her looking around in confusion in the beginning of the MV. And you also have to think about the fact that all of the three members are wearing uniforms in their solo MVs, meaning that they probably didn't awaken their Odai powers on purpose. And in the same way that Cherry gets home to Hassel and Yojin, couldn't it be that Jinsoul is in her school uniform because, well, she was just going home from school when she suddenly was teleported into another world? Again, having this kind of symbolism of being trapped, being trapped in a small space, in this case not a cage, but instead a jar, and then breaking away from the small confined space and being free, 
Jinsol is probably in Middle Earth for the first time, and just like in Sweet Crazy Love, she is being controlled or directed by someone working behind the scenes, not wanting to be seen. And to me, this feels like it could be Eve, and the mirror cherry not being cherry would also make sense. Even though a lot of orbits think that cherries are actually cherries assigned fruit, it would make a lot more sense if these were from Eden and were actually the assigned fruit of somebody else. And also, if we think about it, Cherry has more connections to the Luna 1 3rd members through her friendship with Hassel and Yojin than she has connections to the YYYY members and Eden. And if her assigned fruit are actually cherries, that could mean that she is from Eden. But this doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense to me, so I believe that these cannot be cherries assigned fruit. And I also feel like this could be a little bit of a misdirection, that Cherry's name being Cherry and her having cherries in her MV could be misleading to us and maybe this was even done on purpose. So I believe that this person looking like Cherry giving Cherry a cherry, that was a mouthful, could be actually Eve. We saw Eve in the cinema theory giving Cherry an apple. So it is not impossible for her to teleport around and take fruits with her to give them to someone else. And then Eve being the one observing Jinsoul to see if she would be powerful enough to create a bridge to Eden and giving her the cherries so that she can awaken Cherry's powers, as well as to get to Olivia Hay to help her exit Eden, would also make a lot of sense and it would close so many open questions that we have had for years. I mean, why would Jinsoul have a fruit that can teleport you if fruits are seemingly only assigned to the YYYY members and Eden? And why would Eve give Cherry an apple if Cherry has her own fruit that can teleport? teleport people around. And it would also make sense of the VHS effects right after the cherry falls down, because Eve used them to get to Jinsel to observe her through a VHS camera and so on and so forth. Now we can see Jinsel's chin and it pans down to her chest. She is wearing a lot of chains and has a white top. The background is dark blue and Jinsel is enlightened by blue and purple light. Then we can see the water bubbling scene from Jinsel's MV, but this time it switches from blue to purple and then to red before showing us Kimlip, in a way this could be establishing the sequence in which they gain some kind of power, but not necessarily awakening their odd eyes. This could mean that Jinsoul was teleported to Middle-earth first, as we can see in her MV there is only darkness and water, like in the Bible, where the face of God is upon the water. Cherry annoyingly awakens the powers of Kimlip, who in her MV makes the moon eclipse. She turns the grass red and just like in the Bible separates the light from the dark. Think about it for a moment. She is the only one that has both day and night scenes featuring in her MV. In Jinsoul's MV, there's only darkness. And in Cherry's MV, there's only brightness. In the eclipse, day and night, light and dark are combined, and afterwards they are separated into light and dark, yin and yang, Jinsoul and Cherry. So it could be that Cherry annoyingly creates Middle-earth, after all she is light, or in other words, yang. And yang is a symbol for creation. So like in the Bible, there's this earth now, and then there's darkness and water just for light to be introduced to it and to then create plant life, which could also explain why in Jinsoul's MV there's basically nothing but darkness, and in Cherry's MV there are a lot of plants, and one plant in particular that to me seems like the world tree, and then because there cannot be only light or only darkness, the two are combined in an eclipse and then separated into day and night. They in a way combine their three moons, just like we can see in the Girlfriend MV. <sighs> so, now we can see Kimlip in the field from the Love Cherry Motion MV, and it switches to Cherry looking around, establishing that it probably was Kimlip who was waiting for her arrival in Middle-earth and to blind her with light to get her attention. It switches to Kimlip in her MV noticing that she is being watched and turning her head, just to switch to her standing in the field again. Interestingly enough, Jinsoul is standing in the purple field, and Kimlip is standing in the green field. I don't quite know what this is actually supposed to mean. To me it feels like another hint at the fact that this plan of getting Cherry to awaken her powers and join Odai Circle was not a plan solely planned out by the Odai Circle member. Remember how we can see Kimlip's representative animal in Eve's MV? Eve actually found Kimlip and helped her to find the other member. That is why, in a way, Kimlip, Cherry and Jinsoul are all practically clueless in their MVs, and why they all are looking around and being confused because they feel like they're being watched. Now we can see the scene where Cherry is waking up in Middle-earth and it switches to the red owl eye opening, so in a quite literal way opening your odd eye to the oddness around you. Animals are often known to perceive things that are not visible to humans, like dogs barking at ghosts or a cat hissing at vampires. Kids are also often seen as being able to see supernatural things. Which could be interesting to us when we remember that Yojin is being described as a type of daughter figure to Hustle, and then she is lost in a magical forest, like in Hansel and Gretel, or the Odai Circle members being described as zealous and curious girls. So it could be that everyone has some type of Odai, so being able to perceive some kind of oddness around them 
but only the Odd-Eye Circle members are able to actually control this oddness, which could also explain the weird things that we can see in the other MVs, like Heejin seeing all kinds of colors awaken around her, Hyunjin walking around with a cat hat, Hasso seeing a doppelganger of herself, and being transported by a truck that has no driver. Just some examples. Now we see a close-up of Kimlip, also having a lot of chains on her, and she also wears a white top. She is enlightened by red and purple light. We now get a quick shot from her MV, where she has the light red smoke around her, and then we see the scene from both Jin Souls and Cherry's MVs, where the moon is in parts covered by clouds, but this time it is in red. Then the moon switches to the mirror cherry, holding the cherry, and then a new scene of Jin Soul holding a cherry. She is putting the cherry on top of the cake that we can see in Cherry's MV. So Jin Soul was the one planting the cherry, and Kimlip was the one waiting for her and luring her to the field. And also, this might just be my imagination, but the TV is glitching when Cherry and Jin Soul stand next to it. This reminds me of the effects ghosts have on TVs which could also explain the static in the Rain 51 decibel MV. And it connects to the static in Jinsul's MV as well. Now we see Cherry looking at the cake and her fainting scene in Middle Earth. After this, we see Cherry being a reverse of the other members. We see her back instead of her chest and the camera pans up instead of down. And she is enlightened by red light from the back and blue light from the front, which creates purple on her arm. Unlike the other two members, she also looks at the camera. She also has some jewelry, but unlike the others, hers seem to be a little more posh. It seems like it could be some type of crystal, and she also wears a white top. The scene from the Love Cherry Motion MV, but it seems like the sun is setting. They're standing in front of their three moons, and the sky is purple. Again, we see the sequence in which the members awoken their powers. First Jin Sol, then Kim Lip, then Cherry. What I also just noticed is that Jin Sol is wearing some type of pearl necklace. So she is the bridge between the posh crystal necklace of Cherry and the cross chain necklace of Kim Lip. We rotate around the members and all of them have a gradient of colors on their faces from blue to red. And for the first time ever, we can see their odd eyes. Jin Sol has a light blue one, Kim Lip has a red one, and Cherry is the only member with an odd eye on her left side instead of her right. Hers is light purple. In a way, this is not the only time an odd eye has appeared on the left eye. In Heejin's MV, there's an emphasis being put onto her left eye, and now in Air Force One MV, it is her right eye that is odd. This could prove my theory that Hi Hi and Butterfly are two separate timelines, by establishing that their odd eyes can be mirrored in the alternate timeline. Hi Hi Heejin has her odd eye on the left side, and Butterfly Heejin on her right side. But this is just speculation. Now the odd eye circle logo is revealed. The word odd creates a symbol for three moons next to one another. The Odd Circle members, three moons, or perhaps the three worlds in this universe. Earth, Eden, and what is between them, Middle Earth. So let's take a look at the description. Three moons, three colors, three eyes. Odd Circle is the second unit of Luna, composed of Kimlip, Jinsel, and Cherry. While the first unit, Luna 1 3rd, released Love and Live and Love and Evil to talk about the coexistence of sweetness and cruelty in First Love, the three girls of Odd Circle talk about how you shouldn't wait for love to happen passively, but should take the initiative to make it happen yourself. So something I just thought about is what maybe is a stretch is that the opening of the MVs could have a significance to their odd eyes position. The Earth girls have the left to right opening and the Eden girls have the right to left opening. Maybe this is supposed to let us know where in the Luniverse you are. And this could be a connection to the odd eyes side. Bibi has her right eye highlighted, each in her left eye. This could also explain why Bibi is described as coming from a foreign place. And that foreign place could be shown to us in the Everyday I Need You MV. And what do we also see in that MV? Jinsel who also has her odd eye on the right side. So they possibly both could be from Eden. The only thing that makes me question this theory is the fact that we only know of one additional fruit, which is the cherry. But what would be the fruit of the other two members? I mean, maybe the cherry is Jinsel's fruit and her giving it to Bibi to exit Eden is why Bibi ends up being an android on Earth. Maybe she wasn't successful to exit Eden as a human because she never got to find her own fruit, which is needed to exit Eden. But what do I know? So to get back to the reveal teaser, in a way, cherry scenes being cut in between the other two members could reveal to us that she has been the one watching the other members. But I so far thought that the person watching the Odd Circle members is Eve. I mean, she has the tape recorder from the Girlfriend MV and at the end of the MV there is a girl circling the members. Seems quite a bit obvious, doesn't it? Well, we see Eve and Cherry a lot together, and Cherry and Tianjin also have a connection. As I said before, Cherry has a lot of connections to different members out of the subunits. But what is really important to understand is the significance of the doppelgangers. A lot of members meet their doppelgangers, but in Cherry's case it is part of her powers. In the Girlfront MV, they show off the powers of the members. And Cherry, well, she talks to her doppelganger. She also sees Hyunjin and is blinded by her, just like she was blinded by Kim Lip to get her attention, and just like Cherry herself blinded Hustle to get her attention. And at the end of the MV, there's a girl circling around them. To me, there are two options right now. Cherry could actually talk to an alternate universe version of herself, maybe her butterfly timeline counterpart helping her out, 
or what could seem a little dululu at first? What if these doppelgangers are not actually, well, doppelganger? What if Cherry isn't communicating to another version of herself, but instead to her mirror member? She, in the beginning of the MV, is shown to us on her head, having a map in her hands, and seems to be looking for something. Then she arrives at the amusement park and marks the map with a cat sticker, as if she already knows that Xianzhen is going to be there. Also notice the owl mark on the bottom that shows us where Kimlip is. Then she is blinded by Xianzhen and actually seems shocked and kind of upset. Right after this is the first time we see Cherry talk to herself. Then her odd eye awakens and the odd eye Cherry is looking at the other Cherry. What if this is not literally Cherry talking to herself, but Xianzhen talking to Cherry? We see the yellow truck from Hustle's MV and Cherry finds a mirror on the ground, mirroring the scene in the Cinema Theory video, where this mirror is the connection between Cherry and Eve. Cherry looks through the mirror and then sees Eve through it. After this, a version of Cherry makes a paper plane out of a map and lets it fly towards another Cherry. So maybe Eve's sending Cherry a map where she marked the locations of the other Luna members? Which could also make sense because we see in Eve's new MV that she finds members through her claw machine, like she finds Yojin or Kimlip, and Cherry's fruit bed is actually also added into this claw machine. I mean, this would explain why we see a connection to another member every time before we see Cherry with her doppelganger, and Eve being the one to give her a Cherry in the Love Cherry Motion MV could also be a reference to the cinema theory where she gives her an apple and is first seen by Cherry through a mirror. And this would also be an interesting explanation for the ending of the MV, where we see a girl running around the Odd Eye Circle members. The Odd Eye Circle members don't quite know it yet, and they can't see her yet, but Eve is like a puppet master working from behind the scenes. This would make the scene near the end of the MV even funnier, where the girls are looking at their creation, and then they look a little mad at the camera, just like they noticed Eve watching them. On the top part of the map, there are symbols for the Luna One Third members, a bunny for Heejin, a cat for Hyunjin, a bird for Hustle, and a deer for Bibi. And in the vertical version of the MV, we get a closer look at the symbol at the bottom of the map. There is an apple, a bat, a fish, and what seems to be a frog. All of these members have the ability to jump to different places in the Luniverse. Eve, Cherry, and Jinsel are seen to jump around between Earth and Eden, and Yojin is described as being like a frog and jumping around in excitement, as well as her being lost in the forest that might or might not be created by the Love and Live as well as the Love and Evil album. Let me reach even a little further and tell you about a story. Do you know the story The Ones Who Walk Away From Omelas? In the story, the narrator tells us about a seemingly utopian city named Omelas and the one injustice that makes Omelas the happiest place on Earth. When the story begins, the narrator describes a place of unimaginable happiness, and the people of Omelas are celebrating the annual summer festival. Underneath the city, a child has been locked away and forced to live in misery. Omelas' happiness is dependent on the suffering of this one child. Sooner or later, every citizen of Omelas is told about the child's existence. Horrified, some people walk away from Omelas, never to return. But the ones that stay are knowingly living in bliss, while condoning the suffering of one child for the happiness of many. What if just like in the story, the happiness of Luna One Third has a hefty price being paid by YYYY? What if their happiness created the dark forest and in connection to that, Eden? If they are allowed to be themselves, then the YYYY girls are not. They have to follow strict rules so that One Third can enjoy their freedom. This would tie in perfectly with the subunits albums, in which we have the positive and the opposite negative side shown to us. They create love and live, which is their happiness, so there also has to exist love and evil, which is the sadness and misery of YYYY. If there is yin, there also has to be a yang and vice versa. And if perhaps Luna One Third created their mirror selves in YYYY and Eden, would it be a stretch to say that Odd Eye Circle created Middle Earth as their own utopia and the moon they keep talking about is the perfect world of Middle Earth that is formed by the members? And it also functions as a bridge so that the YYYY members get to escape their prison of perfection. But if in High High everyone is happy, then who actually suffers in order for the happy end? The butterfly timeline. So the question of why would the Luna members who are now all combined and happy in High High want to reverse the timeline is answered through this theory. Well, they don't want their happiness to be causing someone else's pain. They decide to save everyone instead of only looking out for themselves. Hi Hi Go On helps out the butterflies go on that was unable to change anything for the better. And she resurrects them all. She changes the outcomes of both timelines. And then Burn could have possibly been the comeback that connects the circle and ends the suffering of the butterfly timeline by burning the circle of pain and happiness to unite everyone. This would explain why the plus plus teaser shows us love and live, mix and match, and beauty and the beat. These positive albums are showing us the plus plus, so the high high timeline, and the darker aspects of the Luniverse are shown to us in the break packages. Love and Evil, Mix and Match, and the never released Femme Fatale. And something that I just thought about is actually, there was this rumor about YYYY actually having a pretty dark theme and aesthetic, 
that then was changed to their upbeat and bright aesthetic for their debut with Love Forever, because Chu's comeback was the most popular out of all of the YYY members, so they changed the concept because they thought that it would be more popular. But it would have actually made a lot of sense if they had a pretty dark comeback, because Luna One Third songs in Love and Live are pretty upbeat, and even though some of them have a little darker messages, they all seem to be bright and happy, so it would have been the perfect mirror to give YYY a pretty dark concept, but whatever. And nobody ever made the connection, well, because Femme Fatale, the final of the saga of the subunits, never was added to the mix. Showing off the positive and negative sides of the subunits was really important, and that they never got to show the dark side of YYY probably changed a lot as well. This could also explain why they are the only subunit shown to us in the butterfly timeline as themselves. We get to see Eves, Chu, Gowan, and Olivia Hay. This would also fit in well with what the Butterfly Timeline Order Circle members are doing in the Air Force One MV. They crash a party of noble posh people, and the lady Cherry takes the crown off of looks a little bit like the lady in the Love Forever MV. They take the power away from the people and free themselves, and others from the pain and oppression. They can finally be free, and even the posh Heejin seems to join them. And to just quickly get back to the Odai of Heejin, I thought about the color of the Odai being white again, and I thought about the fact that Heejin is the only Luna member that had a white attendance card. Every member got an attendance card in their color. Hyunjin yellow, Yojin orange, BB pink, Olivia Hay dark grey, and so on and so forth. But Heejin's attendance card is white. She is the only member that has a color that is not her assigned one, and white is actually the subcolor of Cherry. So her Odai being white puts a lot of emphasis on her slash Cherry's color, like we also can see in the photo booth being purple. Or maybe it puts a lot of emphasis on Posh Heejin's color not being hot pink in this timeline. And can we also talk about the fact that the Odai Circle members in Air Force One are not the members of the High High timeline, but the members of the Butterfly timeline? So Kimlip and Jinsul are known to us with darker colors, Kimlip has a rich and somewhat dark red, and Jinsul, who has the color black assigned as her second color, has a dark blue assigned to her. Then Cherry has a lighter purple color and the color white assigned to her, like we can see in the Cinema Theory Up and Line teaser. Now, I did talk about this in my last video, but I'm going to add something to it. Kimlip was the only member to somewhat keep her color. Her color in Air Force One and on her album cover is a light red to pinkish shade. Her album is the only one with a white spine. Jinsul and Cherry are shown together a lot in the MV, and they have both black spine album versions. They now have different colors as well. Jinsul has either yellow or white, and Cherry has either blue or yellow. So when we read a little bit into it, then not only is yellow the reverse color of blue, but Jinsul and Cherry basically exchange colors. In the MV, Cherry is yellow, and on the album, Jinsul is yellow. In the MV, Jinsul is white, and while it is not the first thing that comes to mind, Cherry's second assigned color is white, while Cherry on her album cover has blue, which is Jinsul's assigned color. So what if this is supposed to make it even clearer that these are different Odai Circle members? What if these are the Butterfly Timeline members, and what if Kimlip is the only one that remembers the other timeline? After all, she has a butterfly tattoo on her cover. And butterflies are name-giving to the butterfly effect, and this is a reoccurring symbol in the Luniverse. I don't quite know how to connect all of these dots yet, but it is definitely interesting to me. So the next video I'm going to release is going to be the analysis of the three Odai Circle subunit songs, I swear. And if you don't want to miss out on new Odai Circle analysis videos, slash Luna analysis videos in general, you can subscribe to me, and if you like the video, you can also like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.